This is Twit. They didn't have a lunar lander they, because they weren't landing on the moon. That was part of how they could get up so fast. Um, but the, the lunar lander was what saved the astronauts later on Apollo 13. So, so what, were, what was the risk of not having the lunar lander? Well, you touched on one of the primary risks for the entire mission. They are going to orbit the moon 10 times over the uh, course of 20 hours. So they're not going to land. And for that reason, they're leaving behind the troubled lunar module. But the idea is brilliant. It's an epiphany because by going, they can learn all about uh, lunar travel and about the moon and scout a landing site, do all kinds of preparation for the ultimate lunar landing without landing themselves. But as you note so correctly, that means they're going without a lunar module. And the lunar module has a backup purpose. Um, and that is as a backup engine in case anything goes wrong on the primary engine of the spacecraft. So if anything goes wrong for the astronauts at the moon and they cannot relight that engine or the engine malfunctions or doesn't perform correctly, they could be stranded in lunar orbit, crash into the lunar surface or fly off into eternal solar orbit. Um, so everything has to function properly and there's no redundancy in this engine. And as you so poignantly point out, this is exactly the thing that saves Apollo 13 two years later. They have a, a redundant backup engine that Apollo 8 goes without. And it's just one of the myriad risks that Apollo 8 is taking that future flights wouldn't take. And when you listen to these other astronauts and NASA legends talk about it, that's part of what they're speaking of when they speak so reverentially about Apollo 8, that so much was being done for the first time. And they're going without redundancy. They're flying the Saturn V for the first time with men aboard. And uh, everything is for the first time. Yeah, I mean, so much of this is about courage, um, which is kind of a cliche, but when you really think of it in terms of what they were doing, um, you write about all, all of their, their childhood, all three of these men's childhood, and Jim Lavelle's, uh, you, you talk about a quote from Robert Goddard, who he was a fan of, and said, every vision is a joke until the first man accomplishes it. Once realized, it becomes commonplace. So, you know, it's just like, do you do you see that now when people are talking about like we're going to send someone to Mars like and everyone's like ha 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 we'll never get there like is there equivalent uh, to, to that now? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you love to hear human beings dream big. In fact, dream of the impossible, and a lot of people will downplay a lot of the plans that human beings have. Um, but you have to be real careful to distinguish what really is possible and what's not possible. The thing that uh, seems different to me about these days is that we are not facing this existential enemy the same way we were in the Soviet Union at the height of the Cold War. I think our belief that our very existence as a country and as a people depended on beating the Soviet Union allowed us to um, push into places and do things that might otherwise have been impossible. And what I wonder is whether we can do continue to do the impossible without that kind of um, fear uh, for our very existence. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, we need we need a, a bigger enemy, I guess. <laughs> um, and another big risk was the that the training was abbreviated. Talk a little bit about that. Right. Ordinary space missions took 12 to 18 months to prepare for. That's for astronaut training and for the engineers to work out all the technical details for software to be built and tested and so many other things. So you're looking at 12 to 18 months normally. When the epiphany for Apollo 8's mission came by uh, George Lowe, this phenomenal, brilliant uh, manager at NASA, there was only four months left before uh, the, the launch window would close. So Apollo 8 was going to go on four months of preparation. Um, in early August, the mission did not exist for Apollo 8. Apollo 8 was originally planned as a low Earth orbital checkout mission. Four months later, on December 21st, 1968, they were going to launch for the moon. And they weren't just going to fly around the moon and come back like the Soviets had been planning. They were going to go into lunar orbit 10 revolutions over 20 hours, incredibly complicated, incredibly daring and, and bold and so, so risky. Uh, but that was the plan with only four months time. And it was over Christmas. Was it in, intended to be over Christmas or was that just, it had to be then they wanted to get it in before the end of 68? No, I think they wanted to get it in before the end of 68. And that was the last possible launch window. It happened to put them around the moon on Christmas Eve and Christmas day. And, uh, to give you an idea of what that meant and how it wasn't planned for Christmas, when James Webb, the head of all of NASA, 
first heard the plan for Apollo 8, he said, and this is a quote, are you out of your mind? <laughs> and he pointed out all the risks and the firsts that would be encountered in the rush to the launch pad. But he noted something that nobody had really thought about before. And that was, he said, if something happens to these three men at the moon, no one, lovers, poets, no one will ever look at the moon the same again. And nobody had thought about that, but it was true also of Christmas, because think about what would have happened if these men had crashed into the lunar surface or perished at Christmas. Who would ever look at Christmas the same? So it was a tremendous risk, not just technologically, but spiritually almost, that they were going to do this. And I reproduce a letter in the book sent by a man in Connecticut begging NASA, don't do this. This has been such a terrible year already. We cannot take a disaster at the moon, which is one of the most beautiful elements to our existence. And Christmas, which is that one moment of peace and togetherness we have in this horrible year. How could you risk all this at the moon at Christmas? And yet this was the time NASA decided to go.